So today I'm going to be talking to you about the inevitability of long distance relationship stalemates. Now this is going to be my first actual dedicated long distance relationship video. I know like the very first thing I put in my, vi in my video descriptions is that I'm a LDR specialist and that's true, but I've been making my videos about like self improvement and shit and that's not something that I'm focusing on. So I need to bring the focus back on the actual topics that I'm like really good at, which is helping people with their long distance relationships. And today's video topic is, and today I'm going to be telling you about how stalemates happen in long distance relationships, what you can do to prevent these stalemates from happening, how to keep the chemistry flowing between you and your long distance spouse, as well as tips and tricks that you can use in order to make sure that you don't have any stalemates going on. And so that if your relationship does happen to need to last in LDR, for more than like two years or something in the worst case scenario, then how you can avoid actually having it fall apart and being reduced into mediocrity. So I'm gonna start with the very first thing about like defining what exactly a stalemate is. So in chess, I'm gonna use chess because I used to be varsity captain for chess. In chess, a stalemate is what happens when you are continuously stuck trying to take over the king but you can't take over the king and five moves are like repeated or I'm, I'm giving a really loose example because I'm not looking at a dictionary or some shit, you know, but the point is, is that when you can't checkmate the king and the king can keep moving back and forth and back and forth and there's no capturing or no winning or losing, it's a stalemate because nothing is happening anymore. The game has been played. The game has not been won, it has not been lost. You found yourself locked into a stalemate that will not end unless an outside force declares it to be over. So how exactly does chess apply to a long distance relationship? Well, for one, you can play chess online with your partner and that's super cool and dope, but that's not what I'm getting at here. What I'm getting at is the inevitability of a stalemate happening between you and your spouse. Now, it's very common for long distance relationships for most people to only last a month to three months, right? And then maybe you get bored of each other or something else happens. They start seeing somebody in their real life or you found somebody in your real life and now things are getting dead in the water. Well, you need to prevent that from happening. Now, when it comes to other people interjecting themselves into your life or their life, and they find that other person more dateable than you, you can't do anything about that. That's just life happening. So sometimes things need to move on. But what if you're locked into a stalemate where you're constantly just spending every single day asking the same boring questions? or sharing the same boring story about how you accidentally ate raw butter for the fifth day in a row. How do you recognize and get out of this loop of stalemates? Well, there's a few things that you can do and I'm gonna list them right here for you. You can feel free to skip to any part in the video description. You can feel free to skip to any part of the video, but I'm telling you that you need to watch this entire video, otherwise it will not actually help you as well as watching it in its entirety. If you're gonna to skip to a section, go ahead, I'm not gonna stop you, but please understand that watching the entire length of the video is going to help you so much more than just skipping around it. So please, please just stay with me on this. So the first thing that you need to do is think about, is the relationship actually getting stale or is it getting to a point to where it's genuinely not working anymore? Is it not worth the effort anymore? This is a very fine line that you need to think about. If it is just getting stale, there's a few things that you can do. If it does look like it's on the rope's end and you're probably going to have to end it, there's also still a few things you can do. But I'm gonna start with things that you can do if you think that it's just getting stale and you could spice up the relationship a little bit or you could try and like kind of push boundaries that you've been scared of pushing because you wanna cope and you don't wanna be alone. And that's something that happens with a lot of people too is that they're only in a long distance relationship just for the fact that they don't wanna be alone. So if you've established that you don't wanna be alone 
and this relationship is genuine, and you're interested in actually rekindling the original spark that you had with your partner when you first started dating them, then there's a few things that you can do. Number one, you need to get physical. This includes video chatting with that person every day. Every single day, you need to be on a video call with that person. I don't care what other people say they have in their relationship. Video calls are important. And this is because it allows you to do so much more than just texting would ever do. It allows you to actually see someone, see their reaction when you say something or do something. It allows you to take them on virtual dates and have them take you on virtual dates. You can show them your town. They can show you their country. It's There's just no reason not to video chat every single day. But you need to be very careful that you're not video chatting too often. You need to limit the amount of time that you spend on video chat. Now, I know that sounds a little weird, but let me get into the little nitty gritty details about this. If you spend more than three hours a day on video chat with somebody, it is going to get stale. And the reason for that is because if you're spending six, seven hours out of the day, just sitting at a desk looking like this, just, just doing nothing, it's not going to be engaging. You need to get out there. If you don't have a cell service plan, get a cell phone number, get an unlimited data plan, call them up, video chat with them on like Skype or Discord or, or Facebook Messenger. Whatever video chat software you have, you need to be on a video chat and actually take them out into the world. And they should do the same for you. Hell, pay for their service if you have to. If they're in a, like a third world country where cell service is expensive and you can't get unlimited, be a man and pay for it. Or if you're a woman, pay for it. And I don't know, but I'm getting sidetracked. Just do something to where you and her or you and him can share your lives together through video chat. And then another important thing that you need to do on video chat is to get a little spicy. I'm talking actual shirts off, pants off, clothing off, and your hand or whatever object you're gonna use needs to be putting in work. Yes, I am talking about video calling while doing something with your partner, right? There needs to be some kind of intimate relationship there. Even if it's just virtual, it needs to happen. And if they're not willing to do it because they're in like still living with their parents or they're not comfortable with it, that's fine. That's whatever. I'm not saying that like it's, you know, a requirement that you have to get fully nude on a camera. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is that I am 99% positively sure that spicing this up in this way is going to do wonders for actually getting you two back connected together. And you need to finish. None of this 30 minutes of just talking, you know, BS. Hell, you could even play like poker with each other while doing it. Play strip poker or something. Do something wild with it. Virtual strip poker, right? You know, and I'm not just pulling all this out my ass, okay? I have experience in the game. I, like, I've done all this, okay? So don't come at me saying, oh, I can't do that because it's embarrassing. Shut up and do it. And if they're not willing to do it because of genuine valid reasons, then that's fine. But I'm telling you that it's going to be worth it to break boundaries. And if they're not willing to do it virtually and they say, like, even if the topic comes up and they say they're not willing to do it in real life either because they want to wait till marriage or they're traditional or something, that's a little bit of a gray area. You can kind of decide on that. For me, it's kind of a hard no. I'm not willing to continue this if that physical attention and retention isn't there. I know that's shallow to say, but honestly, if you really are genuinely interested in having a long distance relationship, these physical barriers need to be shattered before you meet because the last thing that you want to do is fly over to a foreign country in the middle of buttfuck nowhere and get stranded because they were only after your passport. It happens all the time, folks. Don't be, don't pretend it doesn't happen because it does. Okay, so fair point, take them on video chats. What else can you do when you're not video chatting? Probably try avoid interviewing them. Don't be asking them every single day, how was your day? Did you have fun at work? 
How was school? Are you doing homework? Where did you go today? Are your parents home? Stop asking interview questions. It's so cringy and boring. You are so fucking cringy and boring if all you're doing is just asking questions without putting in any effort to be halfway fun. All right? So like, for example, I'm going to give one of my classic lines that I used to use and still use to this day when I text friends, all right? Whenever I'm texting any online friends that I have, I'll ask them for their day. I'll ask them, you've been out slaying dragons today, right? And I'm just asking them, how has your day been? But you make it fun and engaging by saying, hey, you slay any dragons today? And they're like, what the fuck are you talking about? Have you slain any dragons today? No. Why not? You know, just engage in it. Make it fun. Make it engaging. And then when they ask you, well, what do you mean by slaying dragons? I mean, have you gone out and conquered the world? Have you started a business? Have you done anything fun? And of course, all these questions are going to be no, no, no. And then be like, oh, well, then what did you do? I mean, you had to have done something interesting, right? Tell me. Tell me what you did. And then that is usually a lot more fun to kind of like combatively flirt with them and actually have them interested in like, why is this guy talking about dragons and shit, right? It's usually a lot more fun and, and interesting to answer that you haven't been slaying dragons, but you did have a difficult test today. See, it's a lot more easier and fun to do that rather than just asking if you had a test. So that's another thing that you can do is just to like have fun, flirtatious messages just by being interesting and engaging. I know that's easier said than done, but it really is like practice makes perfect. The more that you try it and the more that you do it, the easier it gets, honestly. So then if you actually end up doing any of these or preferably all of these, try continuing to do them for a month. Don't expect the relationship to just magically shift over in one day or one week of doing it. It's not going to just magically shift and break through, you know, the very first day that you do it. You need to do these for a month. If the relationship actually gets like interesting and sparkly and like the love is actually back and everything after trying this for a month, dope. I'm super glad that it actually helps you. But if you don't do these things, I'm telling you, you're gonna stay dead in the water. You're gonna stay locked in a stalemate. And until you end it, it's never going to end until they end it. And they're going to end it by breaking up with you. So if you don't do anything about it, they're going to end it. They're going to move on with their life and you're not. You need to be the proctor that actually engages and reignites the, the connection that you initially had. And you can do all that by doing all the steps that I listed earlier in the video. Talk less. Get on video chats. Be intimate, have fun, be interesting. You can do all this online. So then if you do all this, if it doesn't work, if you've spent a month doing this and it still isn't working out, what can you do then? Well, there's a very high chance then that it's just not gonna work out with this person. And you need to think, be like before you do anything drastic, okay? I hate to see people breaking up. I really don't advocate for it, but sometimes that person just isn't the best for you. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because for three years, for three years, I was in a stalemated, dead-end relationship. Long distance, for th three years. And this was the girl that I had before I met my wife before I traveled to Vietnam and met my wife in person and then started a long distance relationship with her. For three years, I was in a dead end, stalemated relationship. And for the longest time, I didn't want to break up with her because I was coping with the fact that at least it's better than being alone, am I right? It's better than being alone, so therefore I'm not gonna break up with her. But inevitably, when the relationship goes south and you're too scared or too alone to break up with them, it doesn't matter if they're going to break up with you. It doesn't matter if they're going to move on with their life. So why don't you try and just try these changes that I've told you, and if it doesn't actually end up working out for you, then you need to be the one that breaks the bad news. And it's going to be helping you set your boundaries 
and also give you the confidence to find your next relationship. Because an interesting little point in human psychology here, like deep in our brain, we hate to be the ones that are rejected. But when we do the rejecting, it makes us feel strong, independent, and powerful. It makes us feel the ones in control because we are the ones that are breaking it off. We are breaking up with them. They are not breaking up with us. When they break up with us, it's horrible because we don't want that. But if you're breaking up with them, it's something that you've decided and you want. And it not only helps you make a power play, helps you move on, accept things, and the other person does have to deal with it, unfortunate, but at least you've made the step towards, end, towards ending that stalemate and just getting started with your life. And that's beautiful in its own way because now you can go on and find your wife. Like I found my wife. I found my wife like six or seven months after my ex broke up with me. Okay, so depressing side story out of the way. If you do break up, cool. When you find your next girlfriend, end up dating her. Try these changes that I listed in the beginning of the video for a month with her as well. And repeat the cycle as needed until you do find someone that actually fully matches your criteria. And then this is where the exciting part comes in, which is the part about meeting in real life. The reason I'm having you, like the absolute ultimate end goal of all long distance relationships, the end goal of all long distance relationships is to come together in holy matrimony in person, right? To physically be there, to truly touch them, to truly hold their hand and hug them and kiss them and cuddle them to smell them. It's beautiful when you meet up for the first time and all that anticipation and excitement finally gets to just disappear. And man, that's some good ass memories coming back. But sentimentals aside, the reason why you wanna practice doing all this is because when you do meet up in person, you've practiced all these good social habits. So now you have all these good social habits to, that you've built up on from your previous relationships as well as this current relationship. And because you've shown her around your country and she's shown you around her country, you can ask her in person when you meet, hey, I wanna go visit this place that you showed me. And now you already have a date. And you're interesting, you're funny to talk to, you make her laugh, you make her smile, you make her you know, want to actually be out with you in the country that she's from or when she comes to America with you or whatever country, if she comes to you because you paid for a flight, you can take her out anywhere and she'll be super dope and psyched up and happy to be with you in your country. Whatever the situation is, whatever the circumstance surrounding your relationship is, it's going to be all worth it when you meet up in person. And if you're one of those people that skip to this section because you just wanna to get to the end game and get to the point of the video, I'm telling you, you're not going to learn anything. I'm telling you right now, this video is going to be absolutely useless to you if you skipped to this section thinking that you'd get to the good stuff. If it helps you, it helps you, cool, but I'm telling you, it's not going to help you nearly as much as actually watching the first part of the video. Please go back and watch the first part if you skip to this section. So now we get to the section about actually interacting in real life. The whole point of building up all these habits is that if you're boring in a virtual space, you're going to be boring in real life too. Okay, you need to actually physically make yourself fun to talk to. And that's why video chats are so important because it allows you to actually express yourself and show yourself in person. And if you're a boring person that doesn't have any personality, it doesn't matter what you do in person. It's not going to make it worth being a boring person. That's no fun to hang out with. It's just asking job interview questions, right? So all this mental and physical preparation that you put yourself through in order to make yourself interesting and fun and romantic and, and expeditious and bold and, you know, all of this preparation of like mental gymnastic training that you put yourself through up to this moment of meeting them, it all prepares for when you're actually in person and you decide if you want to get on one knee and officially propose to them with a ring. 
This all leads up to the moment to where you marry your long distance relationship. That's why building up these social habits and these social skills is so unbelievably important. That's why in How to Win Friends and Influence People is a book that I will always recommend to people because the amount of knowledge, knowledge and value you get out of this book is unreal. If you don't have any book or if you need to learn something, pick up this book. I can't recommend it enough. I'm not sponsored. They're not paying me any money. I just love this book and I love Dale Carnegie so much that I, I just... This book is the reason I'm able to do this. This book is the reason that I actually have the relationship that I have now. So honestly, if I could recommend even one thing that you get out of this video, pick up How to Win Friends and Influence People. If there's anything else that you got out of this video, I really hope that it actually helps you. And I really hope that you actually get knowledge out of this video and it improves your relationship. Please let me know in the comments below if it did improve your relationship. Give my channel a subscription and a like. It helps me out so I can help you out. And when you help me out, I want to help you out. And it becomes a positive feedback loop. So please like and subscribe. And I'll look forward to seeing you come back here for even more long distance advice. Have a good day, bro. I'll see ya.